water. When it comes to trout, um, I'm, I'm super comfortable reading the water. I'm, I'm pretty confident um, that in this section of like there's a riffle, there's a slot, there's going to be a trout. Um, and so I'll stand there and I'll fish it. I'll change my flies uh, or change my weights or whatever. But when I'm fishing for lake run fish, um, that confidence kind of wanes a little bit where I'm not sure if, I, if my flies are wrong or there's just not fish in the hole. How do you kind of approach the water as you're passing up through and, and which spots are you typically looking for to target these fish? Um, how do I approach these? I, you know, I, a couple ways, you know, there's a theory of walking up the creek from behind, mm -hmm. right? And fishing yep. your fish that are in front of you so that they don't see you. So a lot of times I will tiptoe up from behind. But, you know, lining fish is always a concern to me. If the water's stained and turbid, you don't have to worry about it so much because they're not going to see your line, your fly line, as, as, as readily or as easily. So I might make a couple of casts walking up from behind, but it's not my really my first go-to. Even though it is a stealth move mm -hmm. and you can, you can, the fish doesn't see you, chances of getting a good, good cast off without slapping the water and getting the right drift without drag, whether it's streamer or other, um, can be a challenge. Uh, so I tend not to blow the spot. I tend to tell people, make your first cast your best cast. Mm -hmm. Walk up to a space, walk around it, walk up to the top of it, and fish that run from the fast water at the top at a three-quarter angle downstream, stealthily, first cast, best cast, and work your way down through the, the run into the hole, into the back of the pool or the tail out. And um, try not to change your fly too much in that process on the first go. Because your fly might be the right fly, and your presentation may be the right one. You just haven't gotten to the middle of the hole yet or the back of the run yet where the fish are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, changing and convoluting the equation, it's like a science project. You want to keep some variables um, consistent, mm -hmm. right? Yep, if, you, if, you change your, if you change your fly three times in that, that one run as you're walking through it, and you catch a fish on yellow midway, you start it with white, You'll never really know if white worked. White may have worked, you know, or blue. So you kind of, I like to keep the variables uh, relatively um, similar. I don't like to change them a whole lot until I really realize I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. They're not here or they're not biting. Then I start playing the, the change up game, you know. So but, um, if you if you fish if you fish that run through the first time, um, say on the yellow, and you didn't catch anything, would you go back through and fish it with the white? I would. So I would tiptoe, and I wouldn't walk right next to it. I'd, I'd get out and walk out away from it, mm -hmm. take a wide path around it, and then come back come back in at the top again and fish. I don't like to fish across and down, um, as they, or I call it Presbyterian style. If you ever saw the movie River Runs Through It, <laughs> they, they teach uh, Presbyterian casting to a metronome, which is something they use in music, click, 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 click. Yep. And they also cast, you know, 90 degrees straight across, bend the line and fish down. That's sort of old school. I like to fish three quarters, so I'll come to the top of that hole, and I won't stand directly across, and fish cast straight across. I like to get above it and cast downstream, three quarter down, yep. with a mended line. I try that jigging process that I talked about. Yep. I will try swinging a little bit with some stripping. Uh, I'll try a dead drift with just a mend and not even jigging. I'll, I'll mix it up quite a bit, knowing that, um, and I will change the fly possibly. I might run it, might run you a little through again with more variations on my presentation. Mm -hmm. So that um, again, keeping that science equation the same, so I can understand what it is that they're trying. What they're, are they are they going for the color? Are they going for the presentation, or is it both? Mm -hmm. So I might walk it through yellow the first time, top to bottom. Come back around with a wide walk, wide path. Come above the top at three quarter, above the hole, and fish downstream. And now use yellow again and try more of a jigging process, maybe a swing, and start mixing it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mended line. Um, that's with streamers you know if i'm using a float and some weights maybe i take the float off and really you know try putting a softer cast into if the water's gin clear these fish are seeing everything make sure you're using a fluorocarbon tippet that's number one mm -hmm. for sure every day all day but you know try to um you know maybe change your size of your fly change your maybe you get off the streamer and you go to a, a nymph or an egg pattern Get the weights off. They see them if the water is really clear. Get this float off. They see it. It splashes when it hits. It's, you know, these are things that, you know, become more stealth in your approach. It takes a little bit of skill and some practice, but you'll find it much easier to cast uh, without the hardware on, and you'll catch more fish. When I say hardware, I mean floats, weights, and the like. Mm -hmm. and that goes for steelhead. That goes with steelhead as well. So um, I'm not sure I answered your question entirely, but yeah, I think the question was, do I come back around with yellow again? And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And I might change my presentation and my 
my angles a little bit there uh, and run it through a second time. Then if I got nothing on yellow, then I go to a different color and say, okay, I've done the, the variation on the, the swing, the jig, the, the all of it, right, of the presentation. Now, now it's time to maybe try a different color. Mm-hmm. You know, and then if it's if I'm there 15, 20 minutes, and I haven't caught anything, that's probably when I change color. Then if it doesn't go for about 35 to 40 minutes, and I'm not picking anything, and I know it's the time of year where there are fish there, I move on to the next piece of water. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing, knowing that I come back to that one later, that possibly somebody before me was already there in the morning, and they caught fish. It doesn't take much to stick these fish once or twice. Uh, and then put them all down, you know. Yeah. And they're done for the they're done for the day, or at least a good portion of it anyway. That's especially true with steelhead, but the browns maybe as well. They're a little more forgiving than the steelhead. The steelhead you stick them once and they're done, and um, so you know that's the thing to be cautious of is, is if somebody's gotten to a space before you and they're effective with their process, you know, whether it's a good fly fisherman with a streamer or a great uh, pin, pin guy, float guy with a, an egg sack. Uh, if they're stinging fish, one, two, three, even if they don't land them, they're just hooking them, stinging them. Um, these fish are going to be really leery uh, for the rest of the day and probably won't bite. And they'll be sitting in a hole, much like the ones 